A very good evening to everyone. Welcome to NTA UGC Net Paper One preparation for Batch 2022. And uh, here we are with uh, our live lecture back today for the day. And the topic for the day is teaching aptitude. Most probably will cover the whole topic today. That is, we have left with two subtopics. That is, evaluation system where we are going to look at types of evaluation and uh, choice based credit system in higher education. So, all those students who have joined the class, just uh, let me know if everything is clear, voice and everything is perfectly fine. Accordingly, we'll start. Uh, we'll keep on going ahead. The chat box is open. You can just uh, quickly. Uh, put it in the chat box that uh, everything is perfectly fine and you can hear me very clearly meanwhile there is a biggest announcement for ugc nta net paper one for the new batch which is starting from first jan of uh, 2022 that in this particular batch what are the features and benefits first of all you will be having put it in the chat box that uh, 100 uh, plus live lectures uh, on each and every unit and subunit and this particular uh, topics will be as per the syllabus everything will be as per the syllabus you'll be having 100 plus video lectures which will be covering all the topics sunday revision lectures will be conducted as per the revision of the unit uh, goes ahead maha marathon on each and every unit which will be consisting of 100 plus mcqs which will be for the subscribers Notes on all the topics, that's notes will be in the form of PDF uh, booklets which will be uh, made available. For practice solved, previous year question papers will be given to the learners. Mock test will be conducted based on the whole syllabus after the completion of the syllabus which will again cover more than 2500 MCQs. And the validity for the whole course will be for one year. Now talking about the fees. If you enroll up to 31st December, the fees will be 1499, but from 1st of Jan, it will be rupees 2000. So in case if you are uh, having any doubts or concern, you can contact on the given WhatsApp number. Uh, you can also download the Global Online University app, select the category as UGC Net Paper 1 and can uh, go for the free videos and notes and PP, uh, sorry uh, test. So just to understand how the things are. Apart from this, we also have started our joint uh, WhatsApp batch, which will be for your UGC Net Paper 1 itself. In case if you are enrolling for this WhatsApp batch before 25th of December, the fees will be 999. From 1st of Jan, the fees will be 1499. For your also, you can give contact on the given WhatsApp number. You can speak to them and get the clarity about any doubts if you have okay so moving forward uh, this is just a demo session of the app how the app will be where you have to go on the app download the app with the help of google store select the category as june 2022 where you can uh, take an attempt to appear for the notes or videos and the whole content is given you can just have a look over it okay yes good evening everyone so let's start uh, with our uh, session for the day and most probably today we'll be completing this whole topic of teaching aptitude wherein teaching part is over learners characteristics is over factors are over methods we have completed yesterday and uh, teaching support system and evaluation system we are going to take care of these two points and we are going to complete the unit now apart from this just a small announcement that if any topic i mean to say while reading or while i am preparing the notes any topics with respect to teaching aptitude comes after i prepare the note don't worry i'll take a lecture on that also so anything which is you know no a small small topics which i feel are important and was not taken that time i will cover it out so don't just worry about it okay so let's start uh, first of all i have just a few topics which i couldn't cover yesterday that is one is the consortium of education com for education commission next it's e partshala then we have neptil uh, these two three topics i thought i will just uh, clear first because there are some questions seen on this so let's start now for the day chat box is open any doubt you can just put it in the chat box and let's go with the theory now so basically consortium of for educational communication which is popularly known as cc now this is basically nothing but an association of educational bodies 
which is uh, one of the inter university centers which is set up by university grant commission of uh, in the year 1993 now on the first sentence itself there was one question with respect to university uh, sorry inter cent university center in the form of statement so you should be very careful about the small small details what you are reading what you are understanding so this is one of the inter university centers which use medium of television along with appropriate use of information that is information and communication technology that is with the help of ICT now what are the objectives very important point again for assertion and reasoning or for your statements first thing is that it works into close coordination or has a close coordination felicitation and overall guidance and direction towards the activity of media centers which are set up by UGC in various universities throughout the country so all the uh, centers media centers which are set up by UGC who has a close coordination or a guidance or a direction towards them that is your consortium for educational communication see the role itself you know it's reference to communication so they are the one to look uh, you know the smooth functioning of the centers then to disseminate it means to uh, spread uh, to pass on the information of educational programs through bro broadcast as well as non broadcast i mean to say whether whether either with the help of radio television or in the normal way so they are the one who are responsible to spread the information throughout the country next production of educational programs whether it is audio visual based or it is web based or related sub, uh, support material uh, is is set up with the help of appropriate facilities for such production so whatever type of material support is required now when i'm talking material support that is study material support either with the help of you know audio visual uh, programs or web based links so that is also been seen that it is done in a very smooth manner by cc research activities related to optimizing the effectiveness of such program so it is just not passing the information or you know just uh, looking at or guiding them but at the same time whether it has been optimizely effective or not i mean to say when a program is initiated what amount of output does it gives what amount of impact does it creates what amount of uh, you know uh, attraction it is it gets so minutely researching each and every impact is the work of consortium so that they are also active in that providing a forum that is a committee a panel for active involvement of academic and other scholars in the creation of educational programs so like it is it's not about only spreading and checking but uh, bringing something innovative creative is also they play an important role studying promoting and experimenting with new technology that will increase the reach or effectiveness of educational communication so this is very very important as it is they are playing an important role to disseminate the information but then whether the information is disseminated in a span of in a less span of time or how it can be disseminated with the fastest speed that all is you know taken care with the help of consortium with the help of new technology so basically now how to summarize this obviously you need to remember this points because uh, these type of questions statement either in they are seen in the form of statements or assertion or reasoning remember one thing anything related to communication of programs educational programs so whether it is keeping a control on them whether it is spreading them whether it is making effective use of them whether bringing something new and innovative so that is the work of what that is the work of the consortium so which is very very clear and properly mentioned to you in fact little bit detail so that you can when you read it second time it will be much more uh, uh, clear with a focus okay the next is e partshala e partshala i have last at the end also i have taken e partshala to lay small concept which started in the year no month november 2015 now it is nothing but a joint initiative by ministry of human resource development and national council of educational research and training which is basically for showcasing and disseminating all educational resources now see we have used the word as e partshala that is electronic form including what 
now that is textbooks your audio videos your periodicals uh, the print and non print materials which are not only meant for students but also for teachers parent researchers and educators so it provides if you go on e pathshala website and if you know i mean to say if you also go over the website you can see you know the textbooks are uh, available as digital textbooks for all the classes learning materials uh, it also helps in participation of exhibition context festivals workshop etc so they are making a good use of this e resources the only thing is that students and the rest of the stakeholders should know how to take facility out of it now it is uh, it is under the national mission on education through uh, I, that is information and communication technology which is executed by ugc now here the students can get access of all educational material periodicals uh, videos audios or print or non print materials with the help of e pathshala so like when e pathshala comes in front of you so you have to remember that something which is related to resources in the e form okay e form that is electronic form and that is the main concern of e pathshala to make it available to the various stakeholders so it does not only include students but includes the researchers teachers parents as well as the educators is it fine okay then coming to next is neptel neptel we have done yesterday but still uh, i thought we'll just go for a quick revision which was started or launched in the year 2003 the program to uh, sorry program on technology enhanced learning initiative is an initiative funded by ministry of human resource development coordinated with iits madras and iits now here the central idea of neptel is basically what to put recorded lectures taught by its member institutes uh, in the form of you know open access it is most extensive educational youtube channel if you see a uh, very nicely i mean to say uh, unit wise topic wise very nicely the programs uh, are being uh, set covering engineering basic science humanities and social science and obviously though it comes from the very great uh, pool of faculty uh, systematically the things are you know lined up and very easy to assess it was initiated in 2003 by seven iitians which is uh, which which can be a question which iitians were in, involved in this bombay there is mumbai delhi kanpur kharagpur madras guwahati and rukki and the indian indian institute of science they are the one who were, who has initiated this project since 2014 it has started offering online courses and uh, with certificates to those who have completed the Uh, the course successfully so neptel also provide the courses online with uh, you can also count credit over year but the for that you have to enroll you have to pay a nominal fees and these courses can be successfully conducted uh, once it is conducted you get the certificates out of it okay so yesterday these three topics uh, were left out so that's what we have completed over year and now the next part which we are going to start is evaluation Sondarya good evening very well i'm fine yes after long time seeing you in fact meeting you yes so we are started with our new batch now almost we are at the end of the first unit okay so types of evaluation now this is not a new slide for you but yes the there are a lot of twisted questions from this and students always get confused when the questions are you know uh, brought in front of them i mean to say so many a times in the form of assertion and reasoning these questions are seen so it becomes little bit difficult to crack so just let's again have a revision properly so when i'm talking about evaluation so which is based on function which is based on approaches which is based on interpretation and reference or references so when i talk about functions role placement and diagnostic evaluation so when we talk about placement evaluation again please remember that it is not for the purpose at the end it is at the start of the curriculum you can talk it tell it as initial ass assessment or a pre assessment which is conducted just to understand the skill set of the students in order to give them a specific you know guide them counsel them for a specific course subject field like for example whether you know whether the student is interested in the field of it or a field of commerce or a field of science so placement test is basically taken uh, with reference to the skill set of a student 
and what inclination or interest area is found and the students can be guided for that okay now with that we have diagnostics so please remember when we talk about diagnostics so it is a finding out a problem i mean to say finding out an issue and uh, finding out the remedy see diagnostic it means you have diagnosed okay you have found out but you can't leave it half the way once you know the issue you have to start you know you have diagnosed it so you have to start a remedy for it so it it is in such a way that it is a challenging job where you need to know the root cause of the problem and you need to know the remedy for the same a solution for the same and that is called as your diagnostic uh, type of evaluation when we come in the form of approaches formative and summative we'll do little bit in detail also but formative uh, type of evaluation which happens on a regular basis which happens you know uh in order to improve the student or a learner so that you know he becomes little bit uh, uh confident and the improvement can be seen at the end of the semester in the form of a summative evaluation so you know it is it is done in such a way that a initial or a pre improvement can help to give better results for the summative evaluation so now let's see little bit in detail so what the formative uh, evaluation aims at it aims at helping the students to learn and practice the pallavi uh, de uh, is done after the lesson i didn't get what exactly you are, you mean to say uh, can de i mean to say what does for de for you means what just uh, it can i mean to say that can be any conclusion so it's better you specify i'll just wait for your message okay and then i'll once i see that i'll continue so when we talk about um, formative yes it helps the students to learn and practice so instead of using this word we can also say that it helps in improvement so when it is done it is done throughout the course okay it is on continuous basis why it is done it is done in the form of what um, okay uh, you mean to say uh, fine so this is the question you were uh, diagnostic evaluation is after the lesson uh, you can't tell it the fixed time i mean to say suppose if you are if the student is not able to learn the lesson also no that time also you carry out a diagnostic evaluation just to understand why he is not able to cope up with your speed or why is not able to understand so there there can be any reason for that but which is not compulsory done after the lesson it is done in between also at our, or at the initial phase also initial phase like for example you have uh, taken a lecture or you have taken a session and while summarizing the student is not able to uh, interpret anything or is not able to produce any outcome so in that case also you will start with diagnostic evaluation okay yes uh i hope your doubt is clear so i was talking about formative i'll just start once again formative which is helped uh which is an helping hand for the students to learn and practice so i can use an another word as an it as an improvement when which is it is done throughout the course okay this is done on a continuous basis the reason is to identify the gaps see it's written very clearly to identify the gaps and to improve the learning now maybe like for example the gaps may be minimum but then to give them the efficiency per, per, perfection uh, towards the learning the formative evaluation is done now how it has various approaches that support specific students need so obviously we know like there are uh, questions on on uh, quizzes are the forms of you know conducting a formative evaluation but it depends upon what is an right approach according to the student and that is you know uh, taken ahead with this teacher or teacher goes with that particular approach in order to improve the learning for the learner that's how formative evaluation happens okay now when we talk about summative evaluation it is to assess the overall performance of the student i mean to say till date like for example if i'm talking about one semester so what did the student do for a whole semester uh, so in that sense you, it you can also tell it as an cumulative performance which kept on adding and then you at the end you saw the result when it is very clearly written at the end of the instructional period 
why uh, this is to test the subject knowledge the skills or the proficiency level of the student and it is with the help of you know cumulative assessment uh, with the help of learning products now here at the end so it can be in the form of final subjective uh, exams it can be an objective exams but at the end to an overall judge you know what type of uh, uh, outcome the learner has shown throughout the semester is it clear yes uh, ashwini hello yes neelam welcome now this is just an extra slide if uh, still certain doubts are not clarified so when we talk about formative assessment it occurs during during the learning process summative at the end so this is like a summary we can do quickly so formative is to monitor the learning okay to monitor whereas uh, summative is an evaluation process okay your we, we evaluate at the end that is the total sum cumulative form formative provide students with feedback a uh, regular in interval feedback is given and summative is done with a specific you know score like where exactly the student is standing formative may occur several times during a course unit i mean to say it, it can be as i said it is continuous basis so it can happen um, many times whereas summative is occur few times over the course of the academic year now formative you can use a wide range of question formats whereas in summative there is a limited range either you can go with some subjective some objective or a mixture or a blend or just subjective or just objective it depends upon the pattern so here is you know the assessment given now see i have been telling you this uh, oftenly i mean to say those students who have appeared for the exams now also and little bit shaky i'm not just being negative but let us uh, also accept the practical fact you know somewhere you feel that you have not done well you have you know you have you doubt about your cracking the examination so the first thing is that you know you need to uh, the moment the theory gets you know completed please try to remember one thing you need to try to do mcqs on your own first okay and which type of mcqs i have told you very clearly over here you you have to avoid now previous year questions now uh, do not uh, i'm not against previous year questions but you know what till date i mean to say n number of times you have uh, read previous year questions and i have caught you red handed you know the question little bit of twisted still your answer is same okay even the options are same no still your ans options are different still your option b means option b so you do not have the practice of reading okay and this is what i used to emphasize at the uh, during the time of exams also when you were you know i i have kept on saying that what you need to do is that you need to take fresh set of mcqs okay from various websites goes you can check a lot of questions are there and you have to try solving the mcqs on your own then only you will relate with your theory please try to understand i'm i'm teaching you the theory i'm teaching you the concept you are understanding it's very good okay but you are not checking you are not evaluating yourself and for that it is very very important that you first self practice yourself okay self practice then join the sessions you know be online uh, go for mcq practice with people but many a times it, it has been seen that you are very casual with revision and mcqs that should not happen is it clear with uh, everyone so please try to understand you know that you have to be be very uh, clear about your uh, strategy okay coming to your question pallavi uh, you have said that what is the difference between diagnostic and formative now see when i'm talking about diagnostic evaluation it is something wrong i mean this is you you feel that some issue is going on okay the child is not able to concentrate the child is more fidgeted the child is you know the child is uh, not able to cope up so you see an issue and according to that you try to find out a remedy there is an issue which you have pointed out but in formative evaluation it is it, there is no issue as i said if you remember when i was teaching this point I identify the gaps the gaps may be minimum or there may be no gaps but you are doing this to bring efficiency so that your student or the the class which you are teaching will show their proficiency at the end of the semester so this is the major difference i hope it is clear between both of them uh, formative as well as diagnostic 
in diagnostic you see the issue and then you try to uh, get the remedy informative it is not compulsory that there may be a gap or not there may be no gap but then you want to you know you are practicing so that you get that efficiency level okay now going ahead is with your next is norm reference and criterion reference now see here it's also norm that is you know a particular rule regulation okay when we talk about criteria a specific uh, uh, thing i mean to say for a specific criteria so in that sense when we talk norm reference test it compares a student's performance against the peers okay uh, a single individual student's performance to the peer group so i mean to say to the classmates or you know in the divisions or uh, throughout the university or a college but when we talk about criterion a criterion reference test it compares a student's knowledge and skills against a standard or a set score or a benchmark okay in criterion reference test the performance of other students does not affect a student's score because here it is a comparison which is done with the knowledge and skills as per the standards as per the set uh, phenomena is it clear so please remember in norm and criterion reference test also i mean to say i've started just creating my question bank it will take time so the moment it because whatever uh, uh, i had in my bucket was all practice done in the last exam itself so i have to set sit with all fresh set of questions preparing everything so it will take bit time but till the time you can just you know keep on revising the uh, mcqs practice mcqs fine so now let goes to the next method that is continuous and comprehensive evaluation method so here there are two objectives basically of comprehensive and continuous there are two terms if you can see very well continuous okay that is continuity in evaluation and assessment of broad based learning now learning and behavioral outcomes in a comprehensive way when we talk comprehensive it is you know inclusive of everything so it aims at enhancement of learning through diagnosis as well as remedies at the same time it is a formal scheme uh, which asks the, for the use of formative as well as summative evaluation which can be helpful in carrying out evaluation which is needed uh, in a continuous and a comprehensive level so you can get a mixture of your formative and summative evaluation also in order to uh, you know go with a continuous sorry continuity and continuous and comprehensive evaluation so it is basically in that form you can you know wherein you are you are going to see your continuity and you are going to see that all the factors are involved is it clear okay uh yes i mean to say uh maithi you mean to talk about uh, the example in the form of a norm and criterion was basically to the uh, teacher eligibility test if i am not wrong okay yes so now we are coming to the last part now after this there are small small things which i have noted down in the form of slides we will just revise that also so last part is basically the choice based credit system now to uh, to your shocking i meant to say there was one student a regular student of the life class he had just uh, he had uh, taken an efforts to come back and he remembered that for his uh i mean to say for his uh set of examination uh paper just the recent set which he has appeared for there was a question on full form of cbcs okay so just you know i said no sometimes a lot of su surprising questions can be a form of your uh, paper so that is nothing but choice based credit system which is a uh, educational mode that offers students to offer the courses of their choice including core subjects elective and the uh, skill based subjects so you know this is based on what it is based on the credit system okay so uh, the full form of cbcs is nothing but choice based credit system and every subject is allotted a credit okay and it is it is done on the basis of what it is done on the basis the evaluation is done on the basis of credits which are earned every semester now now when we talk about a convenient uh, a convenient i mean to say it is one of the convenience as well as effective teaching learning platform where the student or a knowledge seeker has a flexibility so they are not been forced with they have a flexibility they have you know a freedom to choose their course 
<coughs> sorry to choo choose their course from the list of given options so what this option consist of this option consist of the core subjects which they have to compulsory study core it means it's compulsory mandatory uh, elective and skill based which they have a choice to opt for so the regulation state credit credit means nothing but a standard method for calculating the theory lectures okay which is which depends based on the theory tutorials or laboratory but for a semester a per semester 13 to 15 weeks is you know the normal session which is conducted okay i hope it is clear now uh, in this you have the grades you can get you know grades and grade point like how how the grades are uh, distributed as per the grade point so o stands for outstanding which is 10 on 10 the grade points is on the scale of 0 to 10 a plus stands for excellent which is on the scale of 9 a is very good which is 8 b plus is good which is 7 b is above average which is 6 c is average which is 5 p is pass which is 4 and 0 refers to fail or you know below 4 is something which is refers to fail or absent the the grade points now here the core courses as i said it is compulsory elective courses where the freedom is given to the students to opt for the subjects of their personal choice and foundation it is basically to build the you know uh, ability skills based on you know the value based subjects which are uh, which can help them to grab the career opportunities so if you remember vocational education topic which we have we have to do in higher education also so the employability uh, criteria is also fulfilled with this particular foundation course okay now uh, the next topic the topic which you have under this is something called as computer assisted evaluation and computer based evaluation okay now when we talk computer assisted it is something which implies use of online test uploaded wherein the student can attempt either via link or the student can uh, visit to the designated centers the one which is conducted by nta ugc net okay neptel also conduct the courses like that only now when we talk about computer based see evaluation it means your final evaluation which is specifically with the help of optical mark reader answer sheets so the evaluation is done evaluation of examinations is via computer and evaluation of uh, your results is also based on computers so this is the basic difference here still student gets confused i am been very uh, particular about this particular topic from day 1 itself now little bit a uh, small small things which i have left out not left out but uh, which are in the form of your uh, previous year question paper some concepts which are there so that quickly i will revise now i will just take a small uh, pause just to know any doubts are there any any questions chat box is open you can just keep uh, messaging i can read it now and okay i'll just answer you anything see i have as i said in a span of uh, we started last monday if i'm not wrong today is tuesday and most yes today we will be completing this unit okay i told you that now you decide a date see now your strategy has to be very strong you can't i mean to say uh, i know that you work very hard but uh, you can't keep on saying that you know four attempts six attempts seven attempts you have given still you are not clear it means now you have to do your formative evaluation a continuous evaluation that somewhere something is going wrong so decide a strategy now i mean to say those students who are regular i mean to say this is the number which i've been seeing from my day 1 for the theory lectures so those students who are regular you decide a time for yourself today tomorrow day after tomorrow not within uh, you know after a month or so just in the span of one or two days decide a time decide a book okay uh, I, if i'm not wrong some student in this live lecture of theory was asking me about the book so normally see i refer an oxford publication book i have uh, two three books i mean to say i have uh, uh, this one also i have um, ks kvs madan's book also i have uh, this one notes also separate notes also i have uh, 
uh, this one uh, pub oxford publication also uh, certain online notes also i refer i mean to say uh, four five uh, links i have through which i prepare the notes or just keep on reading so uh, what i'll suggest is that you decide one source okay any one source of book from where you want to do this topic if you have the book already with you it's okay no need to buy anything now okay don't uh, don't think that whatever you have is not worth it's worth now only thing is that now i have completed all the topics so one day which i said where you have to decide one source okay one particular date on day and a span on time of almost 2 Two and half hours. Okay, it you should be able to complete within this only. You should not stretch, and it should not be like that. Morning half an hour you set, then afternoon you set for half an hour, then evening you set for two hours. No, don't do like that. Sit at a stretch with a fresh mind, where you have an in sufficient sleep is over, and with you have you know you have a uh, a fresh mind with your notepad, and at at one stretch, uh, just read out all the theory part of teaching aptitude. with with con full concentration read out it means i'm not telling you to do a uh, just normal reading a proper concentrative focused reading and once you do that no the things will be much more enough yes pallavi uh, tell what what question you have i'm just waiting for the questions i have not yet started teaching this uh, slide yes what questions you have you can put it in the chat box I hope it is very very clear. I'm emphasizing a lot on this. See, it's not that even I feel that you know reading is important for me. Also, it is important. Though I take lectures, something new thing comes up. Something you know, something which is really you are not aware about. Maybe I am also not aware about. So it's the only thing it can be solved is by reading, reading, reading. So you have to focus yourself on more of reading as you have time. On an average, three months time you have from now. So you have to utilize it. Uh, there is no use of you know slogging like anything for last one month. It may not be fruitful. Okay. So yes, now I'll just wait for the messages. Meanwhile, I'll start this topic that is constructive teaching. Now, we, when we talk about this teaching, it is based on the belief that learning occurs as learners are actively involved in the process of meaning and knowledge construction. rather than passively receiving the information it means that they need to there there has to be some an outcome it is not just just sit and listen i mean this can be uh, implied to you also right now it has to be constructive learning for you and for me it has to be constructive teaching that you are getting something new something new is learned and created okay a uh, stakeholder means uh, yes uh, pradeep basically each and every one who is related to that particular organization like for example if i'm talking about education okay field educational sector and if i'm talking about the college okay and if i'm using the word as stakeholders so now in college who are the stakeholders and everyone who will be affected by you know by the downfall or the uh, uh, progress of the college now obviously it is students okay it is faculty it is teacher uh, that is uh, admin department okay it is your housekeeping department non teaching staff it is your parents it is your trustee it is your i mean to say managing committee okay everyone even the i mean to say the university to which the college is affiliated the country which the or state where the college runs so everyone who is connected directly or indirectly to the institute will be called as the stakeholders like for example the institute gets you know some raw uh, st stationery from some of the stationery shop so even that stationery shop is a stakeholder for the institute is it clear so uh, i hope it is very clear yes pallavi just a minute i'll first see pradeep's doubt is solved or not and then i'll come to you okay i i'll just wait for pradeep meanwhile yes uh pradeep is it clear with you if not then i have to you know um uh, i don't have to come back if it is clear i can go ahead okay now yes uh pallavi i'll come to your doubt because that last point is related to your doubt that phi e model okay 
so now first of all constructive some constructive uh, teaching is something which has to come out with what which has to come out with the something which is knowledgeable something which is new something which has a productive form okay now the role of teacher in the constructivist classroom is to help the students to build their knowledge and to control the existing of the students during the learning process so obviously teacher plays an important role as a social constructivist in the classroom with respect to this model we had an cycle that is you know engage explore uh, explain extend and evaluate now in 2019 there was a question on this it is also called as the 5e model okay that was given by okay the findings actually this uh, 5e model findings were established uh, pallavi by atkin and carplus okay they he was the they were the one to find out the uh, findings basically of the model but then there is no such uh, detail question about this it's only talking about focusing this particular model i'll just clear the screen so that you will understand properly now this particular model it focuses what is the intention of this it focuses on allowing the students to understand the concept okay any particular concept over time through a series of steps and these steps are nothing but this 5e model what is that engaging the students exploring the students explaining the students or extending it and then evaluating it okay evaluating it means you have to ensure that you are finding out whether it has been learned or not okay so it is basically applying what they have learned uh, as per the new situations with respect to enhancing their skills so in short in short you can remember that 5e model is basically given so that you know it is important that students are uh, allowed to understand a concept with a proper sequence and the sequence as per the 5e model is this okay and this is the correct order for ensuring that the learning happens in a constructive approach it means it is said that it is connected that if you want to go for a constructive active learning by that is it's for teachers teachers should ensure that this is the pattern or this is the sequence or this is the order which is to be followed and definitely it will help the student to apply uh, it in the every new situation okay yeah uh, the findings were given by atkin okay atkin and it is car plus okay i hope it is uh, properly visible i have written it on the slide it will that it, it will be visible to you it is given by atkins and clap car plus is it clear i hope now this is this topic is clear constructive teaching and how this constructive teaching is related to 5e model of teaching uh, and who has given it okay constructive you can also call it as 5 5e model of constructivism then going ahead uh, is next topic that is just a second yeah uh, now uh, i said that ict uh, see ict i told you yesterday also that is again a huge content which will keep on coming so now in this class whatever i have managed that you remember i'll keep on adding for this in uh, uh, ict all unit also we can learn that okay so diksha which was an initiative taken by ministry of education which was launched on september 2017 to facilitate digital learning for the teachers from class uh, 1 to 12 now uh, to advance digital learning now this portal is basically designed for the teacher uh, education but it is also available for the students uh, who want to connect with the teacher community and uh, now i have not purposely written any full form of uh, diksha i because students had revised it very nicely and before i could answer no there were answers coming so anyone who uh, knows diksha full form can just put it in the chat box let me refer it once okay so it is basically offering training courses worksheets lessons videos curriculum and assessment tests for teacher they get a unit uh, sorry one of the unique platform of feature of this platform is the qr code which can be scanned to gain the access you know to the learning materials at present more than 80000 ebooks are available uh, for for class 12 standard students in multiple language i didn't yet get i have completed but didn't yet get the full form of this so it is basically 
कॉल्ड एज वॉट डिजिटल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फॉर नॉलेज शेयरिंग डिजिटल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फॉर नॉलेज शेयरिंग प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस वॉज ड्यूरिंग एग्जाम टाइम्स इट वॉज वेरी क्लियर विद द स्टूडेंट्स सो आई थिंक नाउ गॉड नोज वेदर दे हैव रिवाइज और दे हैव दे आर नॉट एबल टू रिकॉल सो इट इज नथिंग बट डिजिटल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फॉर नॉलेज शेयरिंग ओके e paathshala we have revised all the points i have covered as i said it is nothing but an online portal which makes e resources available easily e pg paathshala which is basically for the post graduate courses okay the same intention is the loading of high quality content illustrations videos tutorials documents and pdf basically it is the content which is available for the use of students okay okay pallavi got it yes then we have is digital national digital library of india which was started in 19th june 2018 uh, again a uh, initiative or developed by national mission of education that is through ict uh, a repository consisting of academic contents in multiple disciplines from school to post graduation so it is a all purpose platform which is designed for everyone students of all ages teachers learners you know researchers professionals the platform is available for 24 by 7 more with more than it's a library form so it is more than with 70 indian languages again here also a variety of uh, learning resources are available which are in the form of ebooks videos manuscripts documents and many more that is resources that's a basically library so it is nothing but you know it is a pool of resources okay archana yes hello very late you are we are almost very close by to i am winding up the session but you can see the video uh, later on okay uh, shall so shall we go ahead now now next is we are talking about what we are talking about e shorts uh, siddhu now this is basically a joint a uh, initiative by ministry of education and the in government of india is a digital library which provides e resources again in the form of you know uh, bibliography citation journals okay for the researchers all the academic institutions like central and state universities and college can avail the services by registering at them so this is how we can make the use of the you know, this again a, a good research uh, sorry a good pool of knowledge Uh, for the purpose of uh, content now this is the last topic we are here with now the cone of learning very very important there were questions seen actually i should have covered this earlier but i was just checking out which points i have missed or not so this was the thing which i have you know uh, i have covered edgar uh, edgar dales uh, cone in my revision lectures but this time i couldn't take it in the start so i have just added over here so first of all the importance of a uh, cone of learning that is given by it, it is also given it is also called as dale's cone of learning given by edgar dale okay the cone of experience provides teaching and learning models that allow now see this is the importance okay just read this paragraph very carefully i'm just just going through it okay it is to understand how to increase retention now see we we have studied it uh, you know uh, that is it's something which starts from a concrete ideas to abstract ideas so what is an intention over here is how to retain okay hold back the in, or to increase the retention rate of learners and by involving them in learning so this means that while the learner participate and gets involved in the learning process by the expression they awaken the sensory organ so it is you know it shows that which type of learning will help the learner to retain their uh, knowledge for a longer period of time so when we when we talk about uh, you know reading uh, like reading only 10% of what we read is you know it's kept in mind when we hear the words that is 20% of what we hear is remembered when we see 30% of we see is remembered okay is retained i can say 50% of what we see and hear that is visual and audio so watching a movie looking at an exhibition or a demonstration or a simulation role playing that will help you to remember or to retain 50% of knowledge participating in a discussion and giving a talk that is demonstrating on your own your own self participation you will be able to remember 70% retention of 70% will be possible 
now when we talk about uh doing what we say and what we do what we say and what we do okay is the one which will help to give the 90% of retention so doing a dramatic presentation simulating real life experiences or like for example what we say and do if you remember your school days i mean to say now the things have drastically changed our teacher used to always focus on saying okay say and write say and write say and write why because you no know, that captures a good amount of retention so 90% of what we say and do and do okay and this is implemented for you also so it is written very clearly what we hear i mean to say i am teaching you and you are hearing so what i teach only 20% of that you will be able to retain but if you say it if you read it and if you do it on your own now when i say do it means maintaining your notes which is really going to help you out write and take it from me so you are saying it it means you are reading it you are and you are doing it it means you are maintaining it for yourself and definitely 90% of that will be will really help to retain the concepts and you can yourself see the charm or a magic when you revise your mcqs and only during the time of examination is your alertness okay because sometimes you know we we tend to go off track off the track that is just because of our some bad habits becoming too uh, you know that anxiety nervousness going blank this all things should be avoided the if the, you take care of this all then definitely things will be perfect okay and yes here uh, we end up with a last new concept that is virtual labs now actually this concept no this was not uh, there in the form of any question but i was just reading some practice question so virtual labs uh, was one question which was i have used this in my earlier lectures also but i'll just give you an idea and keep so that you know when you are doing this uh, unit or if you get any question you should not feel that it is something new so virtual labs which started idly in april 2010 okay is a digital consortium which is founded by government of india in association with ministry of education okay the main idea is to provide remote access to virtual lab laboratories for the students from science and engineering streams that is both for undergraduate as well as postgraduate so the virtual laboratory please remember with it means a remote access for what for the students of science and engineering this consortium is conducted by iit delhi and around 12 participating institutes are there the projects consist of more than 700 web experiments and web facilities under the experience faculty mem members and it is expanded uh, by providing the unique opportunity for the students teachers researcher aspirants knowledge sharers and learning resources under a common platform so this is basically a facility which you know even when the student is you know which will help to give the student a virtual access in the form of the uh, i mean to say the laboratories that is virtual labs so you have to just remember this very well so now here ideally i can say that i have completed my whole teaching aptitude now in case what i what we have decided is that you people will do a reading okay and after that i will do a revision class again see what happens no you will be ready with more questions maybe you will bombard more questions to me so even i will get a time to read everything and that time i'll dis i will check what i have missed or what not so one go in one go we will do the revision class but revision class uh, i will do anyway see it is it is my responsibility i'll do it but unless and until you read and then you sit for a revision class it will be impactful you are just uh, thinking that okay let ma'am complete her revision class and then we will read it will be a wastage of time for yourself so you have to in this 2 3 days you have to decide so that you know i can also decide a one go revision class where it will be core revisions a full focus revision and i will open the platform for questions you know only after a specific time because i just wanted to do it as a crash revision so it will be helpful for everyone okay yes so this is what we have ended with 
and tomorrow onwards i'm going to i'm planning to start a new unit and uh, i'll be i'm planning to go for research aptitude as a new unit so let's see um i have done vimla you uh, came late i have done that topic today itself the topic is covered credit uh, choice based credit system properly it is covered i think you have joined late just check the video very well it is done okay uh so yes i'm uh, as i said i have announced that we i'm starting with research because many students have uh, i don't know uh, the fear of research unit so i'll just do it a little bit more in detail every concepts and every topic everything so let's understand and let's see how it goes on so any of your friends or any of your known people who are appearing for gujarat set west bengal set k set or ap set for them we have a full package including the mock test pdf solution with answers notes mcqs video lectures which is at 999 the whatsapp number is given you can if you have anyone in contact you can tell them to give contact the given whatsapp number and take the facility okay thank you everyone thank you for all that love and respect and yes so tomorrow we will be back with our new unit okay and uh, anyone who has missed it uh can see this seven lecture uh, sorry today is the sixth lecture but uh, yes as i promise i will come up with a proper crash course of teaching aptitude but uh, only after i also finish my reading because then only i'll come to know that what topic i have left in case or what topic i need to go little bit in detail okay thank you very much and see you sharp tomorrow at 9 pm again good night everyone Thank <music> you.